Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we got Charlie's Dub J up on the lift. Uh, we're almost done with the winch mount. Um, Charlie's gonna do a couple things a little differently. He's gonna wire in uh, the module and everything into the cab. So he's got a little bit of wiring to do. He's gonna swap out that cable for a synthetic rope. So not 100% done there, but everybody in that video has been asking for a full Dub J series build. So haven't really talked to Charlie fully on we're doing it now, but uh, it's on the lift, so we're gonna do it now. First thing we're gonna do, this thing is running the Rosepa front drive shaft, which the lift height he's choosing to go to, not gonna support that Rosepa very well. He's gonna shred it on the trail pretty quick. So we're gonna do the WJ double card and swap. Some WJs come factory with them, some come with the Rosepa. So uh, Charlie went and pulled a junkyard double card and drive shaft. We're gonna doctor it up with some new U joints, and then we're gonna put the single U joint yoke on the differential and we're going to put the double carbon yoke on the tk so we're going to walk you through that talk a little bit of the pros and cons what lift height you actually have to go to a double carbon and when you can kind of get away with the rosepa so we're going to get that rosepa out of there and get started so if you crawl under your dub j and if you look at either end of your front drive shaft if it has this full round bolt-in style joint this is the rosepa it's a constant velocity joint so if you have that we highly recommend do not lift your Jeep over, let's say two inches without swapping that out to a double carton. They don't like those severe angles and, and you'll shred them pretty quick. So this one's actually running the Rosepa on both ends. So this one's, it's time to go. So we're gonna get that yanked out. Um, we'll show you a little better on the bench of how the joint looks and, and whatnot. So pretty easy pull. Um, there's gonna be flange bolts or regular bolts with collars on each side with the Rosepa. You may see a single U-joint down here at the yoke on some applications with the Rosepa constant velocity joint up the T-case. Um, so if you've got a joint Rosepa at either end, get it out of there. Easy peasy. All right, so we got our Rosepa out of there. This is Charlie's junkyard pulled drive shaft. Um, I think he said it was like 40 bucks into it with pulling the drive shaft, getting the yokes for it. Um, this one's got a bad cap on it, so we're gonna do some rebuild on it before we put it in. So just for some price comparison, you know, U-joints are 17, 20 bucks a piece. You got three U-joints that we're gonna replace. There's a, a ball and socket style inside the H-yoke for the double carton. Uh, you can get them online for the rebuild kits are around 30, 40 bucks. So. All said and done, you're probably going to be in it around $150 for a rebuilt um, junkyard one. Otherwise, we've got on the shelf, ready to go, brand new, not rebuilt drive shafts. They're beefier walled. They've got more slip in the joints than the factory ones do. And all brand new U-joints, new H-yoke, ready to go. These are on the shelf, ready to go. Uh, we got conversion kits you can get with the yokes. You can get just the drive shafts. If you're doing a super tall lift, we can build them to custom length. They're roughly about seven to 10 business days delivered to you. Same cost as this one, 380 bucks. So just wanted to show you guys a price comparison as far as rebuilding, getting a junkyard one and showing the beefiness of the iron rock one. But for this application, we're gonna save a few bucks. We're gonna go rebuild this one, get this one slapped in. Um, but first we gotta get our Rosepa yokes out of the T case and out of the differential. So we're gonna do that next. So just to reiterate, do not lift your Jeep over two inches if you want to keep running this drive shaft. We're going to throw this in the scrap pile where it belongs. It's outside. Get a little tappy stick on that thing. So we got our Rosepa yokes out of there. Pretty straightforward. Take the nut off, tap it out with a hammer. Uh, TK side with the cross member is a little bit of a pain, but there's some room. So we're going to put our TK one on, which is also going to be our double card yoke here. We're gonna throw some RTV on the threads just so no, nothing seeps through. So we're using Honda Bond because that's what we got laying around from when camera guy rebuilt his T case. How's that holding up? Uh, <laughs> I don't wanna talk about it. Sore subject. 
now would be a good time to throw in a new uh, TK seal if yours is looking dry rotted. This one looked pretty good, so we're going to slap her back together. Once we got the yoke tightened in there, we'll top off the T-case for the fluid that we lost. This one's a 247 out of a WJ, so this is the all-wheel drive T-case, so this one takes a slip additive in the oil. So, got our front one gooped up, ready to go. Slide her on in. Now, one thing I want to point out, when you swap out your front yoke, you are unloading your pinion bearings. So if you look here, all this play right here, the yoke is what sets the, the preload on the bearing. So there's a crush sleeve in there. Um, so this one's got a new seal. We've got a new crush sleeve in this one. This axle's got a bad carrier in it, so we're using this for filming purposes right now, but this axle's going to get pulled out. And then part of uh, Charlie's build series, we're going to be doing a, Dana 30 over axle truss. So we'll get into that, but I want to talk to you and I'm going to show you how we're going to reload those bearings without changing out that crush sleeve. Highly recommend changing out that crush sleeve, retorquing it, doing it that way. Um, but we'll show you the end result of what you're looking for in rotational force with swapping out this yoke. So what we're doing right now is we're checking the preload on the pinion bearings. So on a used set of bearings, you want between 10 and 20 inch pounds of rotational force. So meaning at 20 pounds, I should be spinning this yoke right now. Hard to do when your brakes are full of crap, the ring and pinion are shot. So don't take that as, you know, like I said, this axle is getting swapped out because it's junk, but use bearing. So most people aren't doing a re-gear when they're doing a double card. So start, with a new uh, crush sleeve, put your yoke on. Don't send it with a big impact. You want to crank it in there so you feel no play up and down whatsoever in your pinion. Um, you'll feel the same backlash as you, you should have the same backlash this way between the ring gear and the pinion as when you started. Get your rotational torque wrench on. And as you pull it, that yoke should spin. This one doesn't because it's junk carrier, <laughs> but between 10 and 20 inch pounds, that yoke should be rotating as long as you're within that 10 to 20 inch pounds on a used set of bearings, you're good to go. Travis, where'd you get that torque wrench? The auto parts store. We got this one at O'Reilly's. It was like 32 bucks. Great to have if you do gears, swapping out yokes, anything like that. Nice little tool to have. Fairly inexpensive for what they do for you. So... Highly recommend grabbing one if you're going to do a conversion or a swap. Fun thing about interns, it doesn't take much convincing to go, now it's a good time to upgrade. So Charlie has decided that he's going to want the brand new beefy iron rock drive shaft. We're going to throw a new U-joint in this end. He's going to throw it in the rig, keep it for a, a trail spare. But we're going to install the new beef. So now that we can officially take this out of the box and mess with it since Charlie's buying it, um, you know, side by side comparison, you can really tell the wall diameter is much thicker on the iron rock drive shafts. Um, the slip joint has a lot much, a lot more slip to it than the factory one does. So that's a huge benefit. If you ever accidentally split your iron rock drive shaft where it comes completely unfazed and separates. Like, as you can see, there's plenty of slip there, so it's not likely, but if you look, they're dimpled. So these are built in phase and that's how they're balanced. So if this was to separate and it was clocked and put back together incorrectly, you might get some vibration because it may be out of balance. So pay attention to the dimples. If you do separate it, make sure those dimples are pointing at each other when you put it back together. So now we've got new beef, let's put it in. I just said let's put it in, you're videoing me again with not putting it in. You're making me look bad. You forgot to take the tape I off. I forgot to take the tape off. Why does it fit so tight? Don't let that cap fall off either. Yeah, and if you do, make sure you find all the needle bearings. 
So since this one has more missile or slip than the factory one, fully compress it. Start up at the H yoke side. Camera guy, you can give me some light up there. There we go. And then hold your transfer case side and rotate. And bring the slip down to the new yoke. Now we just got to get the straps and tighten her up. Conversion or swap done. So now we don't have to worry about losing any, you know, drive shafts or even the factory one uh, failing on the trail. So now we're able to go to our lift heights. Um, these are good for honestly stock height up to probably six and a half. Even our eight inch kits will fit these drive shafts. So they got, you know, a lot of range to them. So if you have a, a lift kit in your Jeep, you do one of our drive shafts and then decide later you want to go to a taller lift height. That's not a factor that you need to worry about. Um, so that's that's a huge bonus. But if you guys ever have any questions, you know, drop a comment on the YouTube channel. Give us a call here at the shop. Talk to me. I'll walk you through whatever you need to know. Um, but thanks for hanging out. Now we can start on to the really fun stuff with this build. So stay tuned. Drop a comment. Subscribe. Don't miss the next episode. Thanks, guys.